good afternoon. Today is the 1st of December and it's time for yet another not particularly interesting, very vague and probably quite boring vlog. So this comes from an article that my lady wife saw whilst reading the uh, Telegraph. Yes, I drive a Volvo and my lady wife read the Telegraph. And it was about a car that was brought um, at a uh, dealership in Hampshire, again a Volvo, and I will be driving this Volvo in Hampshire to tell you about what happened. So apparently what happened is that a couple bought a, uh, a car from a dealership in Hampshire because they needed it very quickly. Now they lived in Edinburgh. Their car had actually been at a garage locally for about five weeks whilst they worked up what was wrong with it. It's very old and um, after the end of the, the time it was there they decided they didn't want to fix it, it was too expensive or something, and they needed a car really quickly. Now they did what some people do, which is that, I don't know whether they took advice from somebody else or decided on their own, but they wanted a very specific um, type of car. And apparently that specific type of car was only available and to be picked up within a week at this dealership in Hampshire. Now, I have travelled from Hampshire to Edinburgh several times and it is a very long way. I wouldn't recommend to that journey by car really. I recommend maybe by plane or something because it's a bit easier. But nevertheless, that's what we decided to do. So this four-year-old Volvo V60, outside of the Volvo warranty, um, but in a pre-used car, which is, it comes with a year's cover. So uh, apparently, so person bought it, about £15,000 this car was. What the um, couple decided that, that, that uh, the, the wife would go and pick it up, which she did. She went down to the dealership in Hampshire and there was some faults which only manifested on the way back. But we'll talk about that a bit later. So the faults were the wipers, the um, engine management light kept coming on, the spare key didn't work. Later on the car developed a fault with the um, particulate filter, I'm assuming that's a petrol particulate filter or something, um, otherwise I wouldn't talk about it. And um, then was later diagnosed the problem with the inlet manifold. I don't know quite why that would cause it, but I'm not a mechanic, but nevertheless that would probably the issue was. The problem started occurring really when after um, she got back to Scotland, the um, dealership in Hampshire refused to have anything to do with it. They would not answer phone calls, they would not answer emails. The dealership was local to them um, after a fashion were um, instructed to take the car because the dealership in Hampshire had said okay take it to take it to uh, your local dealer and uh, you know get a you know, a VAT invoice for, for this work. Now bear in mind this is supposed to be done under under the um, approved use warranty. You might think that actually it's a bit of a sort of, you know, it's not too bad really. Um, there's not really too much going on here. It's not like, you know, it's blown up or something like that. But uh, for people who are not really sort of into cars and don't know that potentially, you know, these aren't the biggest issues, it's obviously a little bit terrifying when you need to wipe us to work and you can't get in because this spare key doesn't function and things like that. I don't know whether that spare key problem was literally just a battery, which I'm assuming that it was, and the wiper problem was the fact that the wiper blade needed changing. And again, I'm assuming that's what the issue was. I don't know. Um, I'm only hearing one side of the story from this article. Um, and at the time that uh, the letter was written to um, and Katie Morley, the consumer champion, the family was saying that the car was at the dealership in, 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 in Edinburgh and uh, they weren't offered a courtesy car and then we had to use public transport to get around. So the outcome of it was is that uh, Katie Morley wrote to the Volvo head office, uh, which I think is in Maidenhead from memory, and they got a courtesy car for them. I don't know if it was through the dealer or through your UK, I don't, I don't um, remember the details exactly. I'm not sure if you've said it, but the um, 
the upshot was that they got a courtesy car, I think it was reluctantly, and uh, between them, the two dealerships agreed to cover the cost of everything apart from the inlet manifold that was causing the problem with a particular filter, and they offered 10% on top of it. So we've got various kind of problems here with this particular scenario. One of them, I think, is that if you are in quite a bit of time pressure and you feel that you have to get a really specific car down to the, like the engine and the trim particular model and you can't get anything else in that time that's probably not the best idea because you're going to end up perhaps in a situation like this where you feel that you know you haven't got a choice there's so many used cars in this country we're currently in a position where used car prices actually dropped a bit and so there's even more choice than there used to be um, obviously back in the summer the prices were going to be higher the supply was a bit lower so that's maybe a reason to contribute towards uh, this decision um, that might not be in that article but i would think it could be but you don't need to go to the other end of the country just to buy a car like that. You really don't. There are so many things you can do apart from having to actually actually do this. It really, really shouldn't be the case that you'd have to do this and put yourself in this sort of situation. I've another friend of mine did a similar thing um, with another car which when she had problems such as earlier this year, um, which um, I won't go into, but again he bought the car from the other end of the country and uh, then had problems of course in the article it actually says that one of the issues was the fact that they were based in Edinburgh with a car in Hampshire and that didn't help. Which is which is true. You know, if you if you think that, that desperately need to go and buy a car from the end of the country, most of the time you don't, particularly not if you're under this sort of time pressure. That that I think is probably not the best thing to do. I've actually worked with quite a few clients in this sort of situation in my job sourcing cars for them, which actually my job not making terrible YouTube videos um, and we have always worked to find a solution sometimes within like 48 hours in far less time than this so it is it is possible I appreciate that you know we've not got someone who's you know actually employed to do the job on this search because people have other things to do but you, you can do this without having to actually find yourself in a situation however yes of course the responsibility for these things not working doesn't rest with them entirely um, the faults that were there with the wipers, the faults that was there with the spare key and things like that um, which let's just assume the wipers actually, it wasn't just a set of blades and the key needed reprogramming those are not things you can just easily do yourself and so that, um, that obviously is something, the engine management light that came on as well, I, I don't know what that was, it could be absolutely anything so Yes, one of the sort of things is is perhaps to not to not sort of um, if, if you can, if your car is taking ages to kind of stick up the garage and you know they're sort of not immediately telling you what the cost of repair is. Chances are you may be in a situation like this where actually the car's not worth repairing or they can't do it or something. So if that does happen to you, it's taking a long time. Um, now it could be even just not very efficient at the garage or some other reason. I don't know. I don't know this garage. I don't know whether, um, you know, this picture of what's been told to us by the people who had the problem is actually an accurate one or it isn't. Um, I, I don't know all the details, but um, I do know it's obviously very frustrating for them. But uh, there are some things that if you are in this sort of situation, but I think you can do about it. And buying a car from the other end of the country unless you have lots of time and you know it's a really rare car that which you know a Volvo V60 isn't particularly rare then I'd maybe advise you not to do it. Apologies for that viewers um, unfortunately this video has turned into a very shambolic mess the uh, wintry mount just failed again my lady wife is very kindly holding the phone for me so I'm not saying that a Volvo V60 is a particularly good or particularly bad car I, I don't particularly know of these more modern Volvos, if they are, um, if they are sort of good or not. I also think that the dealership could have done a bit more to sort of work, check whether the wipers are working, check whether the spare key is working, and um, you know the particulate filter and the engine management light. I think are probably two sides of the same coin with the same issue. But yes, 
buying a car for you and rent the country, I'm not so convinced. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Like this video, leave a comment below. And uh, we shall see you again soon for more inaccurate and very vague music.